We're having a heat wave, a tropical <laughs> heat wave. Linda Barch is here with some tropical plants. Good to see you. Good to see you. What are we looking at here? Well, this is an interesting plant. Notice that it has both white and pink flowers and then mm -hmm. totally pink ones. When it's cooler temperatures, the, the flower is a combination of pink and white. And then when it gets hotter, it's hot pink. Really? Isn't that cool? It's it's called hot lips sage, and it would it's hardy to zone eight and ten, and we're, we're getting warmer up here, but not that warm. <laughs> so in the tropics, I would grow all, but here's just an annual. Yes. But outside, yes. I enjoy it. It's sort of like the first um, flower that was on film. It was the um, lantana, and mm -hmm. that grows wild wild in Hawaii, but. Here is just for the, for the summer. And all of our tropicals, by the way, are on sale right now for 25% off. So okay. come out and get some cool looking plants. All right, let's get to the phones. We'll start with Terry in Madison. Hi, Terry. Hi. Hi, which question? How are you doing this afternoon? We're doing uh, great. I have some mums, and they still haven't shown any green. Is that normal? No, there aren't any green leaves coming up from the ground. Nothing. It's Nothing. Just okay. Then they may not have survived the winter. Mums, when you buy them in the fall, make sure that you buy ones that are called hardy mums because there are some that are not going to ever bloom in Wisconsin because our blooming period isn't long enough. But at this point, you should at least see growth from the base. Like those big ones you get in the fall, it does, those, don't, those aren't hardy. Some are hardy and some not. you got to check. If they're not growing by now, it's not coming up. No. All right. We'll go to uh, Bernie now in Poinette. Hi, Bernie. Are you there? Hello. Hi. Go ahead. Yes, I have some pumpkins that are, blo are blossoming or making flower. Is that normal? The pumpkins, well, they have to flower before they're gonna, you're going to have fruit, yes. So, so that, that's completely normal. Uh, they should have flowers on them. Oh, yes. Everything that, before you get a fruit, you have to have a flower okay. to be pollinated. All right, let's go to Mike in Madison. Hi, Mike. Hi. Yes, uh, we have a hydrangea plant. It's in a pot. And the flowers kind of like died, and I cut them back to the, there looks like sets of leaves starting. Okay. Was that where I want to cut them back? Well, is this hydrangea uh, one that you got from a florist, or is this one that is actually intended to be planted outside and, and survive our winters in Wisconsin? I wanted to, I want to do it outside. It was for my sister-in-law's uh, funeral. Oh. Flowers, it, it was in a big pot, like okay. a 12-inch pot. But it may not be one that's going to survive in Wisconsin, because some hydrangeas are just... They're, they're, they are not hardy in this, in this area, but many of them are. It depends on where they, where they were purchased. But if you want to prune it back, how far? If you prune back the, uh, the um, spent flowers to a health, healthy set of leaves. And All right, to the, okay, to the mm -hmm. first, first set of leaves. Yes. All right, Matt in Wisconsin Dells. Hi, Matt. Yeah, hello. Hi, what's Hi. your question? Uh, my question is, is I planted some garlic about three to four weeks ago, and I was wondering if that was too early, too late, and if it is, should I plant later again? Oh, darn, I, I need to ask Matt's the specialist. Call the Bruce Company and ask for Matt and tell him Linda sent you because he'll laugh because he's the garlic expert. He has all of these the information as far as the best time to do it. I don't think it actually was too late. We had such an odd year that the soils were so cold, so late, that I think that he's probably going to be okay because we were a month behind mm -hmm. for quite a long time. You have a garlic expert? <laughs> Among let's, other things. Let's go to Janet in <laughs> Fitchburg. Hi, Janet. <laughs> Hi. Hi, what's your question? I'm under attack of the earwigs. My zinnias are being wiped out. <laughs> <sighs> yes, yes. Well, there is a, a product that you can put on to protect the plants because what those is, earwigs do like it very, very moist. I believe it's like something called slug getta because it, it protects against both slugs and earwigs because they both feed at night. It's going to be a granular product. So, yes, they are voracious. Oh, it's that time of year. Pat in Glenhaven. Hi, Pat, what's your question? My question is, something is eating the leaves off of black-eyed Susan plants, flowers, and the parsnips. And the parsnips, okay. Well, are you seeing any insects on these? The, the whole leaf is disappearing. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I, I practically have sticks left. Hmm. Mm. See, that may actually be your wigs also, because if you don't see anything, then that means it's feeding at night. Slugs usually leave a silvery trail that are, that's sort of distinctive, because black-eyed Susans are pretty tough. They're, they have yeah. such hairy leaves. Usually, um, they're not ones that are attacked. So you could spray it, though. I would suggest using that bait at oh, the base of it. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're out of time. Lots of bug questions. Yes. <laughs> it must be July. <laughs> if you're on the live stage, Linda will take your call off the air. We'll see you next week. Very good. And we'll be right back with a final check of your forecast.